Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Natural Gas Engineering Internship at Pure Petro. I hope all of you good and safe. My name is Rahima Babayeva, and I'm a fresh graduate from the University of Aberdeen. I have finished my Master of Science in Petroleum Engineering, and I'm going to be your moderator for today's session on behalf of Araban Oil Gas Academy. Today's webinar is going to be about nodal analysis given by Mr. Graham Helfrich. Mr. Helfrich graduated from Southern Alberta Institute of Technology and was fortunate to immediately gain experience at Piketty Associates, an engineering consulting and software business started in 1974 in Calgary, Alberta. At Piketty, Graham was able to learn from industry giants like Louis Matter, Dave Anderson, Mehran Pula de Darvish, and many more. Graham's love for practical uh, engineering is anchored in rate transient analysis, node analysis, and integrating these to, uh, this topics to produce repeatable workflows for every engineer. IHS market bought Vikit in 2013. Today, over 600 companies use the IHS market engineering software. Graham works with a talented team to practice and inform the industry of new techniques to forecast well production, characterize wells, and inform the industry of the new techniques to forecast the optimized production, uh, sorry, all with a focus on being practical. Now, before starting today's session, I would like to mention that you can ask your question from QA part, and three or four, uh, five questions will be answered by Graham Helprig. Let's welcome Mr. Graham Helprig. Uh, Mr. Helprig, we are delighted to be here today. Thank you very much, Rahima. Uh, can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, everything is perfect. Perfect. Well, I, I really appreciate this opportunity today to talk about uh, nodal analysis. Um, Nodal analysis or wellbore modeling is, is how I started my career 15 years ago, uh, as you mentioned with Fiket Associates, a consulting company in Calgary. Um, and I, I really love it. I think it's a great place to start learning uh, about engineering because the, the wellbore is really such an important place to connect reservoir engineering with production engineering. So I, I think it's, it's a really critical thing to incorporate into any type of engineering expertise, we always need to worry about, about the wellbore uh, and, and maximizing our production. So for today, um, I'm gonna to be hitting play and, and using this recording and you guys are welcome to watch it after. And I, I certainly look forward to answering uh, questions at the end of the recording today. So with that, uh, we're gonna get started. Here we go. Hi there, my name is Graham Helfrick. Today we're going to be learning uh, just how to get up and running with the Harmony Optimized software for wellbore modeling. Now, the software I'm about to show you it comes from a company called Fiket Associates that I just bought a few years ago, and Fiket started in 1974. So I've actually been using this software for about 15 years. Uh, and some of the software Fiket has made for reservoir engineers has been in development for 39 years. And uh, I hope you agree by the end of this um, with what our customers uh, agree with, which is that this software is extremely practical and user friendly. So I'll let you be the judge of that by the time we're done this tutorial. So for today's agenda, we're going to just start with a brand new blank harmony uh, project file. I'll show you how to do that. And we're going to get some basic wellbore inputs entered. We're going to input our fluid properties. And the first calculation we're going to do is called a flowing gradient calculation, figuring out what our bottom hole flowing pressure is. And then we're going to create a gas inflow performance relationship curve. Related to that, we're going to create an outflow or tubing performance curve. And then we're going to look at uh, liquid loading. You know, is the well liquid loaded? Uh, when will it liquid load? What can we do to fix that problem? Then we're going to create an oil IPR and an oil tubing performance curve. <clears throat> now at the very end, we're going to touch on something extra as well, uh, which we'll have time. And uh, that'll just be a little bit of a bonus. It's a, it'll be something you can follow along with as well. Uh, now something to mention is this Harmony engineering software we're going to look at, it is the standard uh, tool for over 600 oil and gas companies around the world to do um, reservoir engineering and some production engineering like we're going to look at today. So everything I've listed here, engineers do in Harmony, and we're just going to be focusing on a, one or two pieces of this today around wellbore modeling. Uh, I'm really excited about 2021 for a couple reasons. One of them is we're making huge advancements for nodal analysis. And one of the 
thinks we're tackling is this problem between uh, IPRs in conventional wells, which are in boundary dominated flow, which uh, really all of these IPR methods have been created for, and improving them to deal with low permeability unconventional wells where the reservoir is in transient flow and not boundary dominated flow. So one thing you'll find is that the IPR curve in an unconventional well is constantly changing. So this is kind of a, a forecast of how the IPR curve looks like in an unconventional well into the future. So around uh, the summertime of 2020, we're going to be uh, dealing with this issue in, in Harmony. The other thing I'm really excited about is multi-phase IPRs. And whenever we have multi-phase flow in the reservoir, whether it's from high water cut or when we drop below the dew point or the bubble point pressure, we get some really complicated fluid behaviors in the reservoir, things that are uh, dealing with changes in saturations in the reservoir and also the relative permeability curves in the reservoir. This makes them for some kind of unusual response to our rate when we change the bottom hole flowing pressure of the well. It's not, it doesn't always respond in the way we expect like a traditional IPR. So if you are interested, go check out this paper we published in 2020 that describes the, the methodology for a multi-phase uh, IPR that also considers the transient or low permeability effects in the well. This technology is going to be added into Optimize uh, the summer of this year. <clears throat> okay, so what is Harmony? So Harmony is uh, the, the little program you hopefully installed on your computer where it has a green icon with a H in it. And within there, there are three different modules that engineers use. Today, we're going to be focusing on Optimize, of course. So we're going to be using these different icons along the bottom. But uh, other times, people who need to do decline analysis or create an average well will use this forecast module. And then if you want to do rate transient analysis, where you combine the well's historical uh, volumes and flowing pressures, we can start doing uh, estimates of permeability, damage, and even do uh, some complex numerical uh, simulation in the reservoir model. So today we're just going to focus on optimize. All right. So I'm going to pop the screen up because as we create uh, and enter our, our tubing size and things like that, this is just a quick reference. So you can always go back in the video and pause it here while you enter it. Um, or you're welcome to just keep up with me as I enter these inputs. So if you go ahead and launch the green icon that says H on it, it's going to get Harmony open. <clears throat> now it should look something like this when you launch Harmony. It's important that this O uh, symbol is green. Green means you have an active license of Optimize. If it's not green, um, you need to go back or contact uh, someone to, to make sure it's green. So we're going to go ahead and say connect to, and we're going to say new, new HLDB file. This is going to create kind of a blank, brand new Harmony project. You can name it whatever you want. Any name you want is fine. And we'll say save. OK, so it should look something like this. There's a map of the world. We're not going to worry about the GIS today. Instead, we're going to go over to the left and say with a plus symbol, gas, and flowing. And we'll see this red well uh, pop up here. So then we're going to click on analysis. Here, we're going to go to this editors tab. And this is where we're going to start to enter our well bore description. And uh, we're going to go ahead and click this drop down right here. We're going to start with our casing. So we're going to describe our casing. So the casing diameter I'm going to use, I'm going to pick this little magnifying glass and that's going to let me use a, a lookup table of all the standard and common casing sizes. So we're going to scroll down and use a five and a half inch outside diameter and this uh, 23 pound per foot option right, right here. So we'll say OK for that. Next, we'll enter the total measured depth of this casing, which is 15,000 feet. OK, as we're doing this on the far right, we'll notice that we start to get a schematic of our of our wellbore. So we've got our casing going down to 15,000 feet. This is actually going to be a horizontal well. So why don't next we enter the, uh, the deviation? So we're going to click over here on the left, deviation survey. Now, this is typically where if you had a spreadsheet of MD and TVD, you could copy and paste it into here. You can have 100 rows. You know, It doesn't matter. You can paste them all in here. For today's sake, I'm just going to enter three rows 
to keep this simple. So I'm going to enter my first MD as 8,300 feet, and I'm going to make that the same for my TVD, so that's kind of my vertical section. Next, I'm going to have a slight deviation with my MD of 8,500 feet, and my, my, M, or sorry, my TVD 8,400 feet. Okay, and then I'm going to finish with my horizontal piece by entering 15,000 feet for the MD and 8,400 for the horizontal piece. Okay, and I realized I just made a mistake back in the um, in the screenshot or the slide I had. I actually had the TVD at 80. 500 feet, which I can use. So that just makes a slight angle for the horizontal section. So, so that's okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and keep them as they appear right here too. So, so here we see our, we've kind of bent our wellbore, so we're following that trajectory. Next, we're going to click on this temperature button right here, and we'll enter our wellhead temperature as 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and our sand face temperature is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if you're using metric units, you can just click on this ruler symbol right here. Everything will switch to metric. Okay, I'll keep it in Fahrenheit here. So back to where it says configuration one, let's let's look at our tubing now. So we are going to land our tubing depth at 8,000 and 300 feet, 8,300 feet. And we need to pick our tubing diameter, so we'll use this lookup table again. And I will go down to 2 and 7 eighths, and we're going to use 6.5 pounds per foot weight for our tubing size. Okay. Uh, next, we are going to enter our perforation intervals. So we're going to put our bottom perforation all the way at the toe, so 15,000 feet. <clears throat> and we'll make our uh, most shallow or our first perf at 9,000 feet. Okay, so we see that, that perforation interval there. Next, we're going to pick our flow path. In this case, we're going to pick tubing. And you notice the green on the schematic shows kind of how the gas will flow through the casing, and then it will enter the tubing. There's lots of different scenarios you could do. What if you wanted to flow up the annulus? We can see, uh, you know, we could do that sort of calculation. We could ignore the tubing and just flow up the casing, or we could flow up both up the uh, tubing and annulus at the same time. So in this case, we're, going to, we're just going to focus on the flowing up the tubing like that. <clears throat> uh, something to mention is on the schematic, there's this word datum. Okay, So this, this point is simply the um, mid, middle point of the perfs. It's just calculating right in the middle. And the reason that's important is when we enter a known wellhead pressure and want to, we want to calculate the bottom hole pressure, where exactly are we calculating to? Because the pressure in the toe will be a little bit different than the pressure in the heel. So this datum is kind of our uh, destination point when we're calculating to a bottom hole pressure. We're going to be calculating it to this point right here. You can always change this if you really want. You can change it to you know somewhere closer to the heel or toe, but I'm just going to do the midpoint of perforations uh, for, this, for this case. All right. Okay, so next we are going to enter in some fluid properties. Just before that, we do have some pre pressure loss correlation options here. And you notice on the right, there's a bit of a description about how uh, how it's applicable, you know, what sort of situation. And I'm going to pick bags and Brill in this case because I am going to have a little bit of water with the gas. Now, if you want to learn more about these correlations, uh, I recommend going under help and web help. Uh, the help file for Harmony is, I'm not kidding, it's like a textbook. All of the theory and background about everything in here is available for free in the help file, including all the background about how these pressure loss correlations were developed. <clears throat> all right, so now let's go to the properties button right here. And this is where we're going to enter in our fluid properties. So under this gas button, we're going to go ahead and enter our gas gravity of 0.7. Okay, uh, that's all I'm really going to do. I'm not going to get too complicated to enter in the fluid properties. Uh, when it comes to the compressibility or viscosity of the fluids, we are going to rely on built-in correlations, compressibility and viscosity correlations that are built in. You can see them under the drop down here. Um, if you're really curious and you, and you want to say, well, what, what is the uh, Z, Z factor or compressibility or viscosity curve look like? Well, we're, we, we, this is totally optional. This is not going to affect your, um, your nodal analysis. But to visualize the curves, we just have to enter the reservoir pressure and then the temperature right here. And we'll, we'll be able to visualize 
what these correlations are doing and 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 uh, for compressibility, etc. Now, if you if you ever have any measured PVT or viscosity, you can go ahead and enter it as a, a custom table right here. But mo most people, 99% of the time, we're just using these correlations in terms of data that's available. All right. So let's go ahead and click this new worksheet button right here. And we're going to do our first wellbore calculation. And down in the Harmony Optimize module, we're going to use the flowing gradient. OK, so up on the top left, we'll click Add Flowing Gradient. And we're going to enter a wellhead pressure of 1,000 PSI, a gas rate of 5 million cubic feet per day. And we're going to select uh, and add some water. And our water gas ratio is going to be 20 barrels per million. So let's talk about these results. So the first thing, what is the calculated bottom hole flowing pressure? Well, it's 1,966 PSI. So this is using the bags and barrel pressure loss correlation, and it's considering the tubing size, the depth, the, the rate, and all the friction and hydrostatic effects that are causing a pressure loss of about 966 pounds from the wellhead down to the midpoint of perforations. What we're seeing on the right is a plot of the measured depth versus the calculated pressure through the wellbore at different points within the wellbore. So this is our input. This is at the wellhead, 1,000 PSI. And as we go down and deeper and deeper through the measured depth, we see how the calculated pressure is getting higher. Uh, this change in the slope is when the uh, gas enters the tubing. So we're starting at the midpoint of perforations with our calculated bottom hole pressure. We're from the midpoint of perfs to the end of tubing, we're having a slight pressure loss just because we have casing. It's a large diameter. So there's there's a slight bit of friction going on there. There's no hydrostatic. And then once we enter the tubing, our gas is speeding up because there's less cross-sectional area to flow. And that increase in gas velocity is causing friction. So this, this uh, flowing pressure gradient is a combination of friction and hydrostatic effects going on. So that's what we're seeing on the plot. Um, if you want to do some sensitivities, all you have to do is click this little copy button right here. And this will let us, you know, change something. What if we change our water gas ratio to 100 barrels per million? Well, we're going to have a higher bottom hole pressure, 2,246 pounds, right? We're adding, adding more water. We are getting more of a hydrostatic pressure loss in the well bore. So you can you can just clone these and do sensitivities on the wellhead pressure, the gas rate, and the water gas ratio. Okay, so I'm going to just delete this second scenario. So we're just left with the uh, initial one here, which we see. Okay, so bottom hole pressure of 1,966 pounds. What if we want to dissect and look a little bit closer at this? gradient. Well, we're going to go to this details button in the top here. And this is this is breaking the wellbore down into nodes, into different sections. And it lets us look at each section to figure out what's going on. So one of the things I want to ask is, how much of this pressure loss is from friction versus hydrostatic effects? So on the left, we'll expand this pressure loss option and we'll turn on delta P friction and delta P hydrostatic head. OK, so if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can see that my delta P from friction is 144 PSI, and my delta P from hydrostatic effects is 821 PSI. So I can really see what's dominating the pressure loss in this particular scenario. It's hydrostatic effects. And that's really mainly due to that water gas ratio. If we were to r remove that water gas ratio, maybe just set it to 0. Actually, I'm just going to turn it off here. Then we go to the bottom and see that our friction delta P remains about the same, but our hydrostatic pressure loss goes way, way down. Okay, so this is just the the effect, the density of the gas now causing that hydrostatic head. So, yeah, it's it's nice to kind of break this down and see you know what are the components of that pressure loss. So I'll turn it back to 20 barrels per million. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can look at here, as you can see. I'm I'm going to just show you one more, which is under additional, and we can look at flow pattern. Okay, so every pressure loss correlation, Beggs and Brill, Gray, um, you know, Haggard and Brown, they have something called 
a flow pattern map and it's basically just describing um, a, a description for example segregated or distributed flow based on um, something called the liquid holdup or, or EL it's just the, the ratio of of different fluids in every segment of the wellbore and what's nice here is we can see that for the very top of the wellbore we're in the distributed flow map for bags and brill and then for most of the wellbore down we're in the segregated uh, flow pattern description so depending which pressure loss correlation you pick they'll have different names for their their unique flow patterns but again this is just a detail if you're curious if you want to understand how that's changing through the wellbore all right okay let's let's go back and uh, we'll create another a new worksheet so the next task we're going to do is creating our gas IPR so we'll click on this left button we'll go add inflow now there's a couple different IPR options here one is called Folkheimer and I'm just I'm not going to enter anything I'm not going to use Folkheimer but I want to show you what it's about so Folkheimer will create an IPR if you input some guesses of the net pay of the porosity of the permeability this is one way to create IPR curves I'm not going to use that today because I don't know what those variables are for my for my reservoir so instead i just want to use <clears throat> the well's current operating conditions as kind of a sample or a test to represent my ipr curve so for that we're going to use the the c and n method uh, this is also called the roland schellenhardt pressure loss equation to create an ipr curve the reason there's four options here is uh, engineers are always dealing with different data sources if we were lucky enough to have a measured bottom hole flowing pressure which is not very common, honestly, it's just expensive. But if we did, we could enter that as a sand face flowing pressure test right here. In my case, you know, we don't have the budget for that. So we are going to use the measured wellhead flowing pressure as our, as our test case. Um, this non-flowing pressure input would be if we're flowing gas up the tubing, but we are also measuring the annulus pressure at the surface. In that case, we're going to have a we call it the quiet side, but we're going to have a, a static pressure gradient in the annulus down to the end of tubing. And that would be uh, another input option right here. So I'm going to pick the, the wellhead flowing pressure. Okay, so to create an IPR, we need to, an estimate of our current average reservoir pressure. In this case, it's going to be 5,000 pounds. Uh, our N value describes the turbulence near the, uh, the wellbore at the bottom, near the sand face. And this can range from 0.5 which is very turbulent to one which is uh, laminar flow. Um, I'm sure in your course you're, you're going to learn more about how to calculate that and the differences, but I'm just going to use one for, for now. Uh, let's say the well is currently operating at the rate of 5 million cubic feet per day, and our well flowing pressure is 1,000 psi. Now I'm also going to enter that water gas ratio of 20 barrels per million. Okay, so why are we doing this? Well, we're, we're trying to use the well's current operating condition. As, uh, like I mentioned, it's a sample test to understand the, the deliverability or the rate potential of the well. And in this case, we're, we're converting from this well of pressure of 1,000 pounds down to a bottom hole pressure of 1,966 pounds, right? It's very the very similar conditions and results that we got with our flowing gradient method a few minutes ago. So the, on the right, we're seeing the results of this. One of them is this y-intercept says 5,000 pounds. This is our current average reservoir pressure, which we input. And it's basically saying if we shut the well in and the rate was zero, this would be the stabilized pressure around the sand face. The other pieces of information here is our current operating condition. So we entered 5 million cubic feet per day, and it's calculating that at a bottom hole pressure of 1,000 950 or 966 psi so this is our second known point and between these two known points the uh the roland schellenhardt calculation creates the entire ipr curve and it creates this thing called a c value right here which we can assume to be constant if the well's productivity doesn't really change so if we were to kind of fast forward let's say a couple of years as we deplete and keep producing the well as the average reservoir pressure goes down what would that ipr curve look like and that's what these options below our four. So if I enter uh, 4,000 pounds as a future average reservoir pressure, we can see, uh, assuming that the C value or the well's productivity stays the same, this is what the IPR curve would look like, okay? So you can enter up to uh, three extra future IPRs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we've created the IPR. What about considering the, the tubing hydraulics? Well, 
This is where we're going to create our tubing performance curve, also called an outflow curve, up on the right. So we'll click this, and we're going to enter our current well of pressure, which is, of course, 1,000 PSI. We'll enter the water gas ratio as 20 barrels per million. And guess what? We have a representation of the well's current operating condition right now. Okay, so this, this is, it's really important to get a baseline of where are we at now in terms of this IPR and the tube performance curve to represent our current conditions. From there, we can start understanding what are our options to increase production? Are we liquid loaded? What would happen if this, we can do a lot of different scenarios, but it's great to get this current baseline of where we're at now. Now, I want to talk about liquid loading for a minute, and I'm going to use this uh, ping pong ball and hair dryer to illustrate that. Okay. So, you know, what's going on there? Well, we have the, the, the wind or the, or the air going up, and that's causing drag on the ping pong ball. There, there's, there's a friction effect happening between the air going up and the ping pong ball surface. So that's, that's one direction. The other effect is, of course, gravity doing the opposite, trying to pull the ping pong ball down. And the reason the ball was suspended in the same place is because those two factors were at an equilibrium, okay? And liquid loading, it works in the same way. Uh, we have water naturally coming out of the reservoir, and the gas is kind of sweeping it and causing that drag. And we want it, all that water, to come up to the surface. Now, the, the minimum rate required or minimum velocity required to lift those water droplets up is called our critical lift velocity or we also call it our turner or our coleman velocity and of course if if, if our rates or velocities are below that that critical one then the water is going to drop down it's going to pool up and collect and create an extra delta p against our sand face and that's going to reduce our production rates so Liquid loading is bad, and how do we see if it's happening? Well, the tube performance curve is helping us create that. So this dashed line is our minimum rate required to achieve that velocity at the end of tubing to lift the liquids. So, hey, we're in good shape, right? We are above that critical lift rate right now, so we are not liquid loaded, loaded at the end of tubing right now. Uh, by default, we're using the Turner method but if we go back to our well bore we can click on this little symbol here with bubbles and we can change it from turner uh, to coleman coleman is just a 20 percent difference it says that we can pr produce down to an even lower rate by 20 percent before we have to worry about liquid loading compared to turner but i'm going to keep it as turner for now uh, now if you're wondering you know what is this tubing performance curve this is this is a series of bottom hole pressure calculations uh, at different gas rates so you know we've, we've fixed the wellhead pressure we fixed the water gas ratio and we're seeing the calculated bottom hole pressure here through a range of rates okay uh, i'm not going to talk a lot about theory today but that's a quick summary of what the tubing performance curve is so what can we do with this well let's say we want to ask ourselves how can we increase the rate of this well um, I'm just going to rename this my uh, current op condition. And how do we? So how do we increase the rate? Well, how do I? I want to. I want to get further down on the IPR curve. And one thing I could do is I could try to lower the wellhead pressure. Uh, so that's going to translate to a lower bottom of pressure, which should hopefully increase my rate. So I'm going to copy this first case and I'm going to modify the well of pressure from 1,000 pounds down to 200 psi notice we get our, our a new tubing performance curve here and indeed our rate increased by about 600,000 cubic feet per day okay I think what's even more interesting though is the critical lift rate how that changed this is saying and if we, we can even look at the table below that in our current case we're going to liquid load at about 2.1 million cubic feet per day but by lowering the well of pressure, we can produce all the way down to about a million cubic feet per day before we have to worry about liquid loading. Why is that? Well, when we lower the well of pressure, we are letting the gas take up more space. It's expanding. It's under less pressure. And so, therefore, it has to move faster in the same uh, cross-sectional area of the tubing uh, because of that the lower 
uh, pressure that it's under. Uh, down at the end of tubing, the same thing is happening. We're at a lower pressure, and so that the, vo the velocity uh, of the gas at 1 million cubic feet per day here is higher because of the lower pressure it's under compared to here at 1 million cubic feet per day, the gas is under higher pressure, so it's more compressed. Therefore, the velocity of the gas is slower, and it would liquid load in this condition. Okay, so uh, reducing the wellhead pressure is a really typical way to A, increase your production rate, and B, solve and delay liquid loading issues. So if we were to ask ourselves, you know, when, at what future average reservoir pressure are these liquid loading things going to happen, I can see that if I just leave my my well in its current operating condition, we can uh, see that at about 3,600 pounds average reservoir pressure, we're going to start to liquid load. Or if we were to lower the wellhead pressure, we could go all the way down to about probably 2,100 pounds average reservoir pressure. Yeah, before we have to worry about liquid loading. Okay, so it's it's, it's really easy to uh, to do these sort of sensitivities. Now, what is a alternative way that we can increase the velocity at the end of tubing to prevent or fix liquid loading? Let's say let's say a compressor is not an option. Well, what if we were to reduce the tubing size to change the tubing size to something smaller? That's going to that decrease in our cross-sectional area to flow is going to increase the velocity of the gas, right? If, if assuming the volume is the same. So what we're going to do is now, uh, I'll just rename this. We'll say uh, compressor. That was our uh, second tube performance curve, and I'm going to take the current operating condition. I'm going to copy it, and in this case, we are going to change the tubing size to see if that would help delay liquid loading issues. So just back in the slides, and I'll keep this up for a second too. I should have shown this earlier, but these are the inputs that uh, I used and we used to create the IPR and TPC for the gas case. This is the alternative tubing size, the smaller tubing size, 2 and 3 eighths OD, that we're going to try as a scenario. Okay, so uh, later we're going to have a similar lookup table, so it'll be easier. But for now, we're going to enter our OD as 2.375 and the ID as 1.995. Okay, and right away we get a result. So this is our new tubing performance curve with the, the smaller tubing. And what's interesting is it's, it's going to operate at a very similar rate as we are currently. Uh, and that's just because there's not that much friction happening in the well at this moment because the rate's not especially high. And so we, we don't really get too much of a reduction in rate, even though the bottom hole pressure in, increased by about uh, 80 PSI. And I guess I'm going to call this smaller. Okay, so we're not we're not really going to hurt our production uh, by adding a lot of friction right now. But what what is interesting is if we go and look at the critical lift rate. So with our current scenario, you know, the well, the, the way the well is operating now with the two and seven eighths inch tubing, we're going to liquid load at 2.1 million cubic feet per day. But with that smaller tubing, we can produce all the way down to 1.4 million cubic feet per day before we have to worry about liquid loading, because again, we're we've, we're increasing the velocity at the end of tubing because of the smaller cross-sectional area to flow. So, you know, why 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 does this why does this matter? Well, if if I'm a production engineer and I'm looking at planning the next well I'm going to drill, and I'm and I think I'm going to have a similar IPR curve. Which tubing would you install? Would you install two and seven eighths, the big one, or two and three eighths, the smaller one, from the very beginning? Well, I would personally install the smaller tubing from the beginning because it's not going to cost me anything in terms of friction and and uh, increased bottom hole pressure from that. But the benefit is I can produce to a lower rate before I have to worry about liquid loading. So there's really no disadvantage to using the smaller tubing here. Uh, and I could always add a compressor later and, again, delay liquid loading even further and potentially increase my rate as well. Okay, So this, this, these are some of the very typical ways that production engineers, that I see them, uh, trying to optimize gas wells and, and evaluate liquid loading. 
Okay, so that's the end of our gas case. Next, we're going to create uh, our oil, IPR, and TPC. Okay, and I'm just going to flash up the inputs we're going to use for the oil, IPR, TPC, so you can uh, I'll come back here and pause the video to use these inputs or just follow along with me, okay? So to create our oil well, we're going to go ahead and, and pick this add symbol. But just before we do that, uh, I'm, on, I'm going to be a little bit lazy. And what I'm going to do is I want to copy this well bore description we've entered for the gas well, and I want to reuse it for, an, for the oil well. So to do that, we are going to click this um, copy button right here. And this is this is taking all of our well bore descriptions and we're making a little copy of it here on our clipboard. So now we're going to go ahead and add an oil well, we'll call it flowing. And we need to make sure we're clicked on that oil well. And we go to analysis and to editors. And, you know, we have the blank well bore inputs, but I want to drag this initial configuration and drop it in this window here. It's going to ask for a date. You can enter any date that you want. It doesn't matter. Any date is fine. And then what we need to do is, is make sure we're, we pick a configuration one and hit minus to kind of get rid of that blank configuration. Okay, so something you'll notice is you say, why does my well bore look vertical? Um, this is a bug that we just discovered where it's not bringing all of the properties over from the clipboard into the well bore. So I apologize for that. So we're, we're going to fix this um, right now. So I'm going to enter my deviation survey exactly like I had it for the uh, the previous well. So in the future, this, this uh, you won't have to do this manually. So I apologize. So our MD is 8300, 8300 TBD. And then we are 8500 and 8400 and then 15,000 and 8500 okay good and then we'll also enter the temperature 90 and 180 okay great now the other thing i'm going to change here is the correlation okay bags and brill is great for gas or gas and water and Hagerdorn and brown is good for oil so we're going to pick on that Okay, Haggard Orn and Brown. Next, we're going to go to Properties, and we want to go ahead and enter our oil property. I'm going to enter my API as 40 degrees, and I'm going to enter my bubble point pressure as 2,500 pounds. Okay. All right, next, we're going to go to this new worksheet button, and we're going to go down to the flowing gradient, kind of like we did for gas, but now we're going to do it for oil. Okay, so we're going to say Add Flowing Gradient. We are going to pick a well of pressure of 500 pounds, a current oil rate of 500 barrels per day, and we are going to enter our gas oil ratio as 100 standard cubic feet per barrel. All right, so we're getting a result. We're getting a calculated bottom of pressure of 3,128 PSI. Now, just intuitively, what do you think? Do you think that there's more of a delta P from friction or from hydrostatic effects? Well, my, my instinct is telling me probably hydrostatic effects because, you know, the density of the oil is so much greater than the gas. But how do we check that? Well, we can go and look at the details again. So we'll look at our pressure loss from friction and from hydrostatic effects. I'll go down to the very bottom here. And we see that the delta P from friction through the entire well bore is only 8 PSI practically nothing. There's almost no friction going on here. But the delta P from hydrostatic effects is 2,600 pounds. Um, it's almost all hydrostatic effect going on. So again, just something that if, if you have an intuition about this, you can always check it in the details here. Okay, going back to pressure. Um, this, this gas oil ratio is very important. You know, when we talk about gas lift, we're injecting gas typically down the annulus and it's entering the tubing and then it's helping lift the oil up. It's basically reducing the, the density of the fluid in the tubing by adding gas and reducing that hydrostatic head 
which reduces the bottom hole pressure. How can we check that? Well, I'm going to just make a, a copy of this flowing gradient and I'm going to change one thing. I'm going to increase the GOR from 100 to 1000. Our calculated bottom hole pressure decreased from 3000 pounds down to 1600 pounds. And that, that means our rate should increase right? Because we're, we're, we're lowering the bottom hole flowing pressure. We're increasing that, that delta P across the sand face. Uh, so again, the GOR is really important in oil wells in the well bore because it is affecting the, uh, the delta P that's happening from hydrostatic head. Okay. So I'm going to delete this second scenario. And so we're just going to keep this, this original one here with GOR of 100. Okay, that's our flowing gradient. Let's go ahead and create our oil IPR TPC. Now, right now, we only have the Vogel method, which is pretty widely accepted by the industry. We're going to be adding some more ones later, but for now, we'll just pick Vogel. So our current average reservoir pressure is 5,000 pounds. Our current sand face pressure, well, I am actually going to go ahead and, co and copy it from this previous step we did in the flowing gradient. Okay, this is our calculated bottom hole pressure. So I copied it and I'm going to use that as an input to my Vogel calculation. And the current rate is 500 barrels per day. And yeah, this is, this is our, basically our bottom hole condition. And so again, very similar to the gas uh, IPR method, we have our average reservoir pressure here on the y-axis and we have our kind of test operating condition this is how the well is currently operating for our rate and our calculated bottom hole pressure. And then this entire curve is calculated from Vogel. So you notice that the, the, the line is straight. It's going to be straight as long as we are above the bubble point pressure, which we input as 2,500 pounds. Uh, below the bubble point pressure, we, we um, get this curve. And this is, again, an effect of, of Vogel. And, and that's what we're seeing here, okay? Uh, very similar to gas, we can enter future average reservoir pressures to pr see how that uh, that IPR may look in the future. Okay. Okay, we've created the IPR. What about our outflow curve? Well, we'll go ahead and click on the right. Uh, for configuration, we'll have to just pick pick it like that from the uh, clipboard where we copied it. And our well of pressure, as we entered before, is 500 pounds, and our GOR is 100 standard cubic feet per barrel. So again, we are recreating the current condition that the well is operating at today, kind of as a snapshot. So this is, this is the well as it is now. And now we can start doing what if scenarios to increase the production rate, which is to, to increase the drawdown. So what are some ways we could, we could increase the rate and lower the bottom hole pressure here? Well, one of them is we could try to add a pump at the surface, something that would reduce the wellhead pressure. So we'll go ahead and say current condition and we'll copy this and we will call this lower wellhead pressure. And I'm going to lower my wellhead pressure down to 200 pounds. Okay. So that yielded a kind of a small increase, an increase of about 88 barrels per day. Not bad, but it may not be economic to do that, right? That, you know, this equipment is extremely expensive. That's quite a small increase in our production rate. Um, how can we get a more significant increase in our production rate? Well, what about gas lift? Um, at the second in, in Optimize, we don't have a dedicated gas lift um, module. Uh, it'll be coming later this year. But what we can do is, is kind of fake it by increasing our, our GOR. So right now, the natural GOR considering a uh, solution gas from the reservoir is a hundred standard cubic feet per barrel. But we can, if we, if we introduce gas lift and it was going and coming up the tubing, then our, our total GOR would increase. And so I'm going to copy this uh, current condition and we're going to rename it increased GOR. And I'm going to increase the GOR from 100 to 1,000. Okay, so that creates a calculated bottom hole pressure of 1,692 PSI, and we would 
our rate would increase from 500 barrels a day to 850 barrels a day. Now we're talking, right? Um, what's really interesting is is playing with this GOR. If we went up to 1,500 standard cubic feet per day, we, day, we got another slight increase. If we went up to 2,500, only a slight increase. So, th so there's this diminishing returns effect as you increase and increase the gas that's coming up the tubing. And A, it is helping reduce the hydrostatic head, but all that gas is also creating uh, drag. It's creating friction and it's that it will increase your bottom hole pressure eventually. So there is kind of a balance point and you can optimize your uh, your injected gas and your GUR to have a good balance between minimizing friction and reducing the hydrostatic head. Okay, so we can do those sensitivities really easily in here. All right, so the last thing we're going to look at is actually a little bit of a bonus example. And for this, we're going to go navigate to this directory and we're going to open up an example file with Harmony, all right? Uh, now, this is actually a good point to mention that this file is automatically saved. There's no save button. So every change you make is saved as you go. Um, if you want to make a backup or an archive, just go and find that .hldb file you made at the start and just make a copy of it. So to go ahead and find that example file, we're going to go file close connection. And we're going to say connect to existing HLDB file. And again, go to that, that directory I mentioned on the screen and go ahead and open Harmony examples. Okay, so it should look like this. We're going to expand in the hierarchy under reservoir, unconventional, refrac. And then we're going to click on uh, diagnostics. Okay, so what are we looking at here? We are looking at this well's daily production history. And we have the daily uh, gas volumes and we have the daily uh, tubing head pressure here as well. And let's look just for a minute, we'll go to analysis. And then we'll go to editors. And we'll go to wellbore. Okay, so this, this well has a wellbore description, you know, and this is being used, if we go back to diagnostics, to calculate the bottom hole flowing pressure at every day in this well's history from the tubing head pressure. Okay, so why is this important? Well, we can look at things like our drawdown through the well's history, right, in terms of uh, delta P in PSI. We can also look at the percentage uh, drawdown of this well through history. So you can you can toggle between different wells and look at the same plot, whatever whichever wells you've imported production history for. All right. Uh, the other thing that this is really valuable for is looking at liquid loading. I'll show you what I mean. So let's let's disable these uh, pressure options. So all we're seeing is the historical gas rate. I want to go down to the bottom where it says liquid lift rate. You notice we see that Coleman and Turner are here. Now, if you just click on Turner, you'll notice it puts it over on the right. And the problem with this is the units are the, are the same as the rate. They're both, these two lines are both in million cubic feet per day, but right now they're, they're not linked together. So the axes are totally off. So what I would suggest doing is, is un-click un, uh, Turner and actually drag the word Turner and when you see a check mark here, let go. So that means that these axes are linked now and the scales make sense. Okay. So what we're looking at here is the in red the well's actual historical gas rate every day. And the black line is the critical or turner rate required to lift liquids at the bottom of flowing pressure or the pressure at the end of tubing every day, which determines what that critical rate is. What this means is we are not liquid loaded during this part of the history, but the well started to become liquid loaded a few months after its initial production. And we see the, these sort of ups and downs in the rate. That is a typical sign of uh, a liquid loaded well. Now this particular well here in August 
the operator shut it in and they actually refract it. This well had, had a really old frac technology used and a new frac technology came out and they went in the, and they refract fracked it here in August. And when they brought it back online, the productivity had dramatically increased and see how the rate's higher. And again, now we are above that critical lift rate and we're still above it right now if this was our present day. So something that I see production engineers do all the time is using this sort of diagnostic to look through the well's entire history to understand the historical drawdown, the historical bottom hole flowing pressures of the well, and of course, if and when the well liquid loaded using this technique. Uh, the last thing I want to leave with you is, you know, at this moment, we're in a downturn uh, and there might not be as much development and drilling going on uh, as sometimes, but I still find that production engineers are, are very busy, right? The optimization is the name of the game right now. So whether you're in charge of a set of surface hydraulics for a gathering system, a pipeline network, um, you may be able to look at where are the bottlenecks in the gathering system now? Where do I have uh, liquid slugs in the in there? And where could I add a compressor to help increase my production? So um, engineers use our Piper software to do that. Another thing is if you're running uh, ESPs, electric submersible pumps, uh, those things are so expensive and there's a lot of different frequencies and ways you can operate them and you can burn them out if they're not operated in the right range. Um, so uh, you know, we have a product called Sub Pump, a software that will let you uh, check on the health of your ESP and tune it to uh, maximize your production and also pick a new ESP for your well. And then, of course, like we looked at today, we did lots of optimization scenarios to increase production in in harmony. So just just some good news for production engineers out there. And that's it. Thank you so much for trying out the optimized software. Again, I'm super excited about this year for the advancements in IPR technology that are going to be coming to the market. And, uh, and I can't wait to work with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this insightful and informative session. Uh, we are very grateful you took the time out of your busy schedule to address our group, Mr. Uh, Helkrieg. Apparently, uh, apparently we, we don't have any questions for today, so we appreciate all your efforts for explaining everything in detail. We, ho we hope we shall see you in our next sessions as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. And guys, please do not forget to finish and submit the quiz before deadline. Moreover, you can watch this webinar again from Pio Petro's YouTube channel. Stay safe, everyone.